Hey guys, welcome to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also continues to perpetuate the debate between GoPro and Contour. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs. So welcome back, another week, another show, and this time it is on Mondays. I know you guys called me out last week, not hitting that Mondays date, I know. Sometimes the technical difficulties do get to me. It is actually a challenge sometimes to get everything just right and, and nail it the first time. And sometimes you do have to reshoot, but enough about that. First, let me give a couple shout outs out there. Now the first one comes from the guys at GI Tactical. Now what I've got right here is a handwritten note. Uh, I placed an order from GI Tactical, just as me. I didn't do it under Airsoftology or anything like that. Uh, they must have found me out. And Jonathan, also known as Panda over there at GI Tactical in, in Virginia, uh, took the time to write a handwritten note and uh, sent me a couple really cool things, including pretty awesome GI shirt here. It's pretty sick too as well in the box. And you know what? I just got to say huge thanks to you guys out there. You got my stuff out super fast to me. It got here on time. The price was right. I mean, I just went and checked out like a normal customer. And again, huge shout out to the guys at GI Tactical. If you guys aren't familiar with them, they're the East Coast Division of Airsoft GI and they have a shop in Virginia. So me being in Tennessee, it's actually the closest one to get to me. So I was shopping on their site. They actually have a surprisingly huge amount of stuff and uh, got it to me fast. So yeah, no, they don't sponsor the show. I just wanted to give a big thanks to them for getting my product quick, having a great price, and uh, of course, the wonderful handwritten note from Jonathan, also known as Panda up there, and the rest of the GI tactical crew, like Ed and the rest of them up there. So if you guys are on the East Coast, or even anywhere for that matter, check out gitactical.com. All right, I do have another thing to announce, and it's more of a question than an announcement. I wanna see if I was gonna bring back the podcast, not attached to the Patreon or anything like that. If you guys follow, Patreon's a way to help donate support. Uh, you can find the link down there below. But outside of that, just bringing the podcast back, would you rather see it as an audio-only podcast, like we've done in the past for the most of the shows, and it be a twice a month affair, or would you wanna have the video version of the format of the podcast to be here on YouTube as well, and to go along with an audio podcast, but if I did the video and produced it to our quality standards here, it would be a once a month podcast. So one podcast a month with a video and audio version, so you'd be able to get both and watch whichever one you wanted, either here on YouTube or on iTunes or any other podcaster for that matter, or if it was audio only and we went back to a twice a month schedule. Let me know down there in the comments. It can't be both, unfortunately, so let me know if you wanna have that video format or not, and we can just crunch it down to one show right down there, let me know, and it might happen before the holidays. Not promising anything, but stay tuned. And on that bombshell, we're gonna move right into your questions. Noble Mods writes, hey Jonathan, I recently got into Airsoft and got an ARX 160. I want to learn more about the internal maintenance and upgrades, but I don't wanna use my ARX. The question is, what cheap M4 would you recommend? Brand, gun style, combat machine, etc. Please help Blizzard. All right, Blizzard, what I did, actually how I got started doing tech is I started buying ICS MP5s off the internet. Actually, it was off eBay way back in the day, before Facebook, before even really a lot of airsoft forums, and started working on them. But if you just want to get into teching and you don't want to mess up your ARX 160, because I understand you've got that one-year warranty on it you don't want to void out, then yeah, pick up anything. I would actually, instead of buying a brand new gun, I would look around and try to find something that's used. Either go to your shop, uh, if you have a local shop and ask if they have abandoned guns that are sitting in the line for the tech counter, you could buy off of them or any kind of just junk gun. If your buddy has a broken gun, you can buy off of them. That's probably one of the better bets. That's how I learned. I bought broken guns on eBay, got them, started fixing them and tinkering with them and then just kind of learned that way. Also, unfortunately for me, I didn't have the access to the internet really. There wasn't a lot of information about mech boxes when I got into doing it. Of course, now there's everywhere. You can watch videos all over the internet. But yeah, I would do that. I'd pick up something broken or worn out, or if you have a local field you play out, a lot of times they have rentals that have really been through the ringer. Try to pick up one of those. You can usually get any of those really, really cheap because you don't really care about the externals, what it looks like. It'll give you a platform to start working on guns and also see what wear happens inside of the guns. I found a brand new gun, you know, everything's perfect, but a used one, there's a lot of stuff going on in there and it can help you start to work through some issues. Zeiss and Fire writes, could I decrease my trigger response time without doing any wiring? 
You know, there are some things you can do to decrease perceived trigger response. And I don't know what kind of battery you're running, so just assuming you're running like a 9.6, moving to a higher voltage battery, if your gun will take it, is probably one of the better ways to get a better perceived trigger response. It's actually a little more voltage, uh, a little more current, a little more amperage going through there, so it's actually going to quick start your gun a little faster. So yeah, I would probably do that first if you haven't. It'll make it feel snappier, if that makes any sense. Uh, beyond that, uh, plug and play MOSFET that don't require wiring really don't increase trigger response. They will help reduce the load on your trigger, but they're not gonna really improve that much. So when it comes down to really trigger response, I'd say do that. Um, if you're comfortable opening your mech box, but you just don't feel like doing the soldering, one thing you can do is shorten the trigger pull. A company called Speed makes a trigger that actually is a drop-in replacement, and you can adjust the length of how far you actually have to pull that trigger before the actual gun fires. And that's a great way to shorten that trigger pull and make it feel a little more responsive as well. So if your gun has a really long trigger pull, like you gotta pull it a long time before the break, meaning like you pull, 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 and then it fires, the speed trigger will let you kind of shim that up inside, for lack of a better description. And there's ways to do it without the speed trigger. People will probably comment about how to do that down there. But if you want to get a professional part, that'll help take up that slack and give you a quicker trigger. So those are just two things that get you kind of close to what you're looking at and, and try to move that direction. Also, if you feel comfortable as well, you can remove the fuse. That actually takes a little resistance out of the gun. And maybe some Dean's connectors. Although Dean's, you do get into some soldering. I'm not sure if you're comfortable doing that or not since you said no wiring. So all of those are ways to help either reduce resistance or help perceived trigger delay, whether it be slack or voltage slowing it down. So any of those or all of them in combination could help you get a better result without having to wire in a MOSFET. Ninja Harry writes, will lipos die completely if you use them and they don't have enough battery? So what I'm taking you're getting at here is if you drain it all the way down to where you just kill it and it won't even turn the gun over, to answer your question, yeah, you're probably gonna break the battery. Uh, unlike nickel metal hydride, and especially nickel cadmiums you could kind of bring back to life, Draining those wasn't that big of a deal. It's not that horrible. Uh, lipos, if you drain them down the way they're designed, they have multiple cells that are actually independent batteries that hold independent charges. It's very different than the way uh, nickel metal or nickel cadmium batteries work. If you drain them down, typically one of those three or two cells, depending on the voltage battery you're running, is going to drain empty before the other ones. And if you've ever seen guys with puffy uh, lipos, you know, the ones like you can squish them, they feel like a really stiff pillow in there, that's what's happened. They drained them down too much. I've been guilty of it too. You're playing, you're playing, all of a sudden it dies and you gotta get those last couple shots off to get that enemy. That is going to do it. So yeah, it's a really, really bad thing to drain your lipo all the way to dead. And that's why they make lipo alarms. Uh, some guns will cut off like the Evo from ASG. It's fantastic. It actually has lipo monitoring in it. So it'll actually shut off and, and stop the gun from firing. So you don't do that to your lipo battery, which is a great touch. Uh, the ASCU, the Airsoft Systems Control Unit Smart MOSFET, has that feature as well, as well as a few other guns. I believe, um, don't quote me on this, I think the new Ares Amoeba have low voltage monitoring with the programmer. If you program two or three cells, it'll cut off using the actual programming box, uh, any of the Amoeba systems for that matter. So yeah, those are all things, or you can get a lipo alarm. They plug into your lipo battery and that extra white plug, the little one that hangs off, and when the battery voltage cell and the cells gets too low, it'll actually sound an alarm letting you know you need to stop and change that battery. But yeah, it's a really bad thing and you can permanently damage those batteries to the point where they either won't work, they won't recharge back all the way, or even worse, you could potentially, in a real perfect world or imperfect world situation, possibly have a fire or explosion situation. I mean, not like boom, wipe you off the face of the planet, but they can catch fire if they really drain all the way down and then you try to charge them back up after killing the cells. So yeah, don't do that. Try one of those methods I told you about earlier to avoid that, or just be mindful. If you feel like, you know, hey, maybe I should change this thing, just go ahead and change it out. Shadow Raven writes, love the videos. As someone wanting to start recording their airsoft games, is a GoPro or a Contour the best choice? I'm gonna make this one short because it's a lot of debate around this. For me, I really like the GoPro simply because it is centered of your head. Uh, with the Contour, it's usually mounted on the left or the right. Uh, or some people put it up on the top of their helmets if they run it that way, but for the most part, it's left or right. And if you're popping around a corner to the left and you got the camera on the right, you're not gonna see anything but a wall. Uh, the GoPro seems to get the action a little better. The quality of a GoPro is still far superior than a Contour right now as of the filming of this video, which is 2014. Uh, and now with the prices of GoPro, the GoPro uh, 
fours that just came out, you can get them for 150 bucks. So really for me, it is it. I know it's not the coolest looking thing having the satellite dish mounted up on the middle of your helmet, but it does produce the best image, especially in low light. I've got a Hero 3 Plus Black Edition, freaking awesome in low light. It's great. Um, I do have a contour as well. And the place for me for a contour is a gun cam either pointing outward or a second cam pointing back at you. I use it on the outside rail of my gun. It points back up. So if I set my gun down, just drop it and I do a transition or I'm shooting down my rifle, it'll actually film me in reverse so I can cut in when I'm doing videos and stuff. So yeah, not that contour is bad. Uh, it just has its place. Uh, contour is great if you put a rage cam lens, which gives you an extra zoom for like a gun cam. If you guys watch a lot of Jet Del Castillo, Jet Desert Foxes videos, he does that. He actually has a gun cam. I think he uses a Replay XD for his gun cam, but that's what it's used for. It, get, it gives you that great image and it gives that good zoom. And uh, I think he uses the contour for that reverse cam I was telling you about. So yeah. If you're gonna buy one, probably pick up the GoPro. It's just right now is the best supported camera out there. All right, that's it for questions. But before we get to the next section, I did wanna bring up something. Last week really sparked up uh, some of the techs that you guys out there. You really got into uh, the comments about high speed and high torque motors. You also brought up some great points in the comment section down uh, below the last video. So if you guys didn't get a chance to watch the video, I've got a link to last week's video down at the bottom and it's at the end of the show. So at the end of the back card here at the video, you'll be able to click and watch the previous Monday's video we talked about high speed and high torque motors. So you know, you guys brought up some great points around that. I think there's a lot of things. Obviously, I didn't want to really dive super deep into the mega tech around here because I like to keep things a little more surface here because uh, it's a broad audience, a lot of people with lots of different airsoft experience. But I wanna tell all you guys out there, if you need really good tech advice, there's a fantastic website to go to and it's airsoftmechanics.com. That's really kind of a geeky kind of place. So put on your geek hat before you go ahead and over there but really when you want to get down to the theory behind why things work and you know wide bores versus tight bores and BB weights and barrel lengths and cylinders and all that stuff that is a fantastic resource it's a great website I think all you guys if you're into the tech world should go check that out it's airsoftmechanics.com and just head on over there and you can join in the conversation you can search you know and, and really probably get an answer to just about anything using the search function but uh, yeah I mean that definitely the place to find out more and ask those really interesting tech questions. So since questions are over, you know what time it is? It's time for the video recommendation of the week. And this week it is Airsoft Obsessed video. And this is one I almost forgot they did. It's a great video actually that shows you how to paint a helmet. I get a lot of questions about how do you paint your gun? How do you paint your helmet? Things like that. And Dave Bax of Airsoft Obsessed did a fantastic job. He has this really cool texture on his helmet that I haven't seen on anyone else's helmet for that matter. A lot of people use, you know, like the fishnet kind of mesh and they spray it, but he went a totally different route. And it's actually extremely good tutorial. It's not that long, it's like six plus minutes or so. And it walks you through all the steps of how to make your helmet look fantastic, look just like his. And of course, it's a good primer if you wanna go with a different method, like that fish looking style or snake skin as people call it. You can use different methods other than what he's using here or different materials. So yeah, check them out. And if you guys haven't subscribed to Airsoft Obsessed, it's a great channel. In fact, Tom and I just released a Scorpion video for K KWA, their new uh, KZ61 Scorpion as kind of a conjunction. And uh, I'll get a link to it in the description below if you guys want to see it. I actually got an early look at the pistol and kind of did a first look slash review of it, even with chrono readings and things like that. So check it out and also check their channel out in this video. All right, guys, that's it for this week. And of course, you know, if you want to get your question answered on Airsoftology Mondays, or if you have a really, really deep tech question and want to get it in our Tuesday Tips and Tricks video, put it right down there in the comments below and vote up the ones you got guys think are great. So again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching the show. And remember, put your vote down there in the comment section below about what you'd like to see with the podcast. If you want to see it video or just audio only, but more frequently or video, like I said, with one a month. And again, I will see you next week on Airsoftology Mondays. But until then, go out, play some Airsoft, have some fun. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.